My name is Philip. I'm a software engineer at Google and I want to talk about technology in education. And during the last 100 years or so, techn technology has made huge changes in all parts of education, from radio and TV to videos, apps, websites, even robots or touch screens in museums. What's interesting though is that when we really think about it, in most of these cases, we don't use technology to do anything completely new that wasn't possible before. <coughs> iPads, ta uh, um, tablets might replace textbooks, uh, videos might replace actual live lectures, and smart boards might replace blackboards. But in all those cases, we just have a different medium which we use to teach essentially the same content. And um, uh, we... Um, I think changing that is going to be one of the greatest opportunities for education in the future and some of my ideas for that I'm going to talk about now and the first one is regarding the curriculum which in the case of mathematics hasn't really changed much ever. We, uh, <laughs> we learn arithmetic and algebra and trigonometry and calculus just like people did 50 years ago and if I'm completely honest these topics and incredibly useful in everyday life and uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to say so and of course we want to encourage people to study engineering and science but I can't really remember many A-level math things I've regularly used in everyday life but that's okay because we don't so much teach them for the actual knowledge as we do to um, to train problem solving and logical thinking, discipline and rigor, as well as teamwork as you learn with other students in your classroom. These, uh, these skills are uh, probably as important, if not more important, than the actual content you learn in mathematics. And what my point is though, that if, uh, if this is what we really want to teach, problem solving, rigor, logical thinking, why not let every student decide on their own which topic they are most interested in to learn these things? Some students might like to do statistical analysis of the Champions League or create digital music or calculate the paths of rockets or uh, shape of roller coasters. Some might even like to study pure mathematics. And all these topics contain very interesting and very difficult mathematics. And all of these topics can be used to teach skills like problem solving and reasoning. But these, uh, these topics are much more applicable to students in their everyday life. There's an actual reason why students want to study mathematics. Um, so, um, yeah, unfortunately this isn't really possible at the moment because there's only a single teacher in a classroom of lots of different students which all have different interests. But, uh, yeah, how we come to that, how to solve the problem. The next topic is uh, teaching, how we actually teach a topic we've picked. And right now, this is kind of how most math lessons work. A teacher explains or a textbook explains how to solve a particular kind of problem. The students memorize a certain algorithm, a certain method, how to solve the problem. And then they practice it on lots of similarish questions. And this method is great for passing exams and getting really good at solving exam questions. But it's not so good at the original goal of teaching mathematics which was teaching problem solving and reasoning. So uh, what I think should happen is that students explore on their own and investigate creatively and are able to discover new ideas, new, um, new patterns on their own and be amazed by their discoveries. This is not only much more fun for students and much more rewarding for students, but in some ways also more useful because there are many, many times where I met very good students who were unable to solve a maths problem just because it was phrased in a slightly different way from what they were used to from their lessons. And of course, this doesn't quite work on its own. You kind of still need a teacher to guide and nudge students and make sure they stay on track and uh, are working on interesting, useful stuff. Um, but in a way, all of the ideas I've talked about are impossible at the moment because you've got a single teacher in a classroom who has to target many different students, all with a wide range of skills and interests and abilities and ambitions. Uh, what you really want is a personal tutor for every individual student. And uh, that seems a bit crazy right now, 
but it might actually become possible in the not so distant future through the power of artificial intelligence. Imagine that we could create a virtual personal tutor for every student who knows their skills, who knows their learning styles, what they're interested in, who has access to data, to learning data from millions of students around the world and can perfectly adapt to match every student. Now, uh, something like this was, would probably take years, even decades, to implement properly, but uh, you have to start somewhere. And what I've been working on is a maths website, an, an online platform called Mathigon. Uh, this is what it looks like. And we can have a look at one of the chapters, uh, say on, OK, we are not connected to the internet. But I've already loaded it in a separate tab, <laughs> uh, just in case. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, this is what it looks like. And there isn't really much content to see yet, if I zoom in a little bit. Um, a couple of paragraphs, and uh, then there are these blanks which students have to fill out. So seven is a factor of 21, and 21 is a multiple of seven. And once they solve these blanks in this case, new content is revealed. In this case, it's a game. And uh, like this, students can step through the chapter and at every step answer problems, play games, um, solve puzzles, and so on. And splitting the content into lots of smaller chunks has two big advantages. First of all, it makes learning a much more active experience because rather than um, just watching a video or listening to a teacher, students have to participate at every step of the way. It also means that we can adapt the content much, more, uh, much better. So in the background, the software is observing everything the student does, how long they take for different, pa um, different questions, how, um, how many mistakes they make, and then it can seamlessly adapt any of the upcoming sections in the chapter to um, be more useful, be more relevant to, um, to the actual student. So for example, we can skip ahead to the least common multiple, and um, rather than telling students what it is and uh, asking them to solve problems, it starts with a question, a problem that doesn't really have much to do with um, uh, number theory or arithmetic to start with about uh, two runners on the track. And then step, step by step, students have to themselves develop the concept of what, it really, uh, what a least common multiple really means. Um, let's switch to a different chapter. This one is on graph theory. Um, in this case, a topic that's not usually part of the um, mainstream curriculum, but not more difficult or um, less interesting, quite the opposite, in fact. And um, if we, for example, go to the section on the bridges of Königsberg, we can see here this section contains a game for students where they actually have to draw um, a path through the city and try to cross every bridge exactly once. And when they make a mistake, there's this virtual tutor in the, um, in the corner which sends messages to students, like in this case, You've already crossed this bridge. And uh, if we uh, do something else, um, it says maybe we should try a different starting location. And it observes what you do and tries to, tries to give you the most relevant, most helpful feedback. And at some point, it will tell you, actually, this city isn't possible. Um, we also have these variables in the text, which you can slide around. To, and, and the text surrounding it adapts dynamically um, to allow students to explore and discover certain patterns on their own rather than be told the answer just by reading it. And, uh, and it goes on like this. There are lots of different puzzles, problems, uh, games to play. Um, uh, like for the four color theorem, for example, um, I was very careful with the title, for example, to not say four color theorem so that when trying these problems, students actually don't know the answer and have a chance of, uh, of discovering it on their own. Um, yeah, so you've got this virtual tutor, which, um, which gives you hint and help. Um, you can even ask for questions. Um, there's a glossary with important keywords to look up and so on. And there are many different illustrations, videos, uh, games uh, to make the whole experience much more interactive and um, uh, fun and personalized for students. 
and of course there are also many things that are still under development, um, much more content that needs to be written and so on. And this was kind of the first part of my talk. Uh, the second part, um, Cindy already mentioned before, is about an app I'm working on or I am about to start working on uh, together with uh, MoMath in New York, which um, is, um, is a, a smartphone app to be used by, uh, by visitors uh, in different museums or science centers around the world. It's called Polygon. Uh, um, and the point is that you have to try to collect uh, polygons that are hidden <coughs> in specific locations around the museum or which you can win by answering puzzles, uh, solving puzzles or answering questions related to exhibits in the museum. And uh, once you collect various different um, polygons, for example, by taking photos of certain shapes in the museum, uh, you can use them to build up certain platonic or Archimedean solids. And uh, yeah, it, it teaches students how many shapes, how many different poly regular polygons you need for all the different shapes, um, and gives them more information about uh, yeah, different uh, um, properties of these uh, and where they appear in, in <coughs> everyday life uh, in the world around us. Yeah, so this is something we've, uh, we, we built this um, just very static basic prototype during the imaginary conference in Berlin um, in July, and we'll start working actually on actually building this um, later this year. <coughs>